Welcome to Ball and Play, presented by Baseball News Club. We cover everything with a ball and stick around the world. We cover Major League Baseball, to international, Dominican, Australian, to Korean. We also cover NCAA Baseball Division I and softball, all the way on down, Little League softball, to T-ball. We cover over the line, wiffle ball, anything with a ball and stick. We will cover it here at Ball and Play. Please stop right now. I need you to subscribe. Please comment and also turn on your notifications. Thank you very much. And let's get started with this journey we call baseball. Welcome to Ball and Play, episode number four. My name is Sesma, your host. Thank you very much for listening to the podcast. And if you're watching on YouTube, thank you very much. Please subscribe. Please comment on any of our topics. We go over a whole bunch of topics today. For example, we're going to talk about the Phillies, the CBA. Great news with the CBA. Light them. Championships are over. Marcelo Zuna, Hall of Fame. Trade rumors. The Los Angeles Angels and their pitching moves that they've made. They've kind of bumped them up the, the ladder. Uh, Yankees news, Carlos Correa, uh, Oakland A's, Tampa Bay Rays. We got a ton of news this week. It's kind of funny in the offseason. You don't think we have a lot of news, but we do. Now, I want to thank all of our subscribers and followers. We're on Instagram or IG, uh, base, or ball, Baseball News Club, and then Ball and Play. But we put on our Baseball News Club stories every day. So if you want to be up to date on softball, Little League, uh, Major League Baseball, International, you follow our stories. I'm constantly putting content on there all day day long and then uh, our youtube channel um, please comment subscribe tell everyone about it um, obviously the background's getting better uh, i'm planning on doing green screen but again i've got a lot of things going on in my life you know i've got work i got relationship you know i got tons of stuff so on my days off i'm doing these podcasts for you guys i appreciate all your uh, support uh, check out our links we do have a paypal so if you'd like to uh, donate some money to help us out uh, we just got done spending about fifteen hundred dollars in equipment upgrades, so we could bring the podcast to you, like I promised you guys. But anyways, let's get started. We got a ton of stuff to go over. Now, the unfortunate theme for today is the Baseball Hall of Fame. It's going to be announced uh, today's Tuesday, the twenty fifth. It's not going to be announced till tonight. Uh, starts at three p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So the unfortunate theme is please go to my IG and look at the information if you see this podcast in time. But by the time you see this. Uh, the Hall of Fame announcements are already going to be done. Um, there's so much going on with this. And we've talked about this each week. Two things are going to happen. Non-PD players are going to get in. The Heltons, the Kents, the Scott Rollins. Those are the three I'm predicting will get in. The non-PD related. Otherwise, you're talking Bonds, Clemens. Maybe uh, there's actually a lot of talk of David Ortiz. He's been really trending and always been on the balloting being one of those guys, even though he's associated with PDs, he seems to be someone that is just, a, for whatever reason, is trending higher than other players like Bonds, Clemens. Sosa's way down there. So it's just interesting. And again, we've talked about this in past podcasts. Does this mean a change? A change for how we're going to do things? Is this part of the progression? And we got, you know, Ken Rosenthal's no longer around. Is that... You know, some fans complained, but then again, is this part of the change in Major League Baseball and being progressive? The CBA is going to change the landscape of the sport, you guys. you got to understand the collective bargaining agreement is dictating how the sport's going to be played for years coming forward. So again, uh, A-Rod's numbers are really low from what I understand. Um, Swan Song for, could be for Bonds and Clemens. But um, again, if someone is going to have a PD relation on their book and they're going to get into hall of fame i'd have to pick bonds to dude is one of the greatest players of all time and here's how i have to look at it or how we have to look at it imagine me and you taking peds if i took peds yeah i could have probably went pretty far but i was too lazy and i'm a san diego bum i'd rather be at the beach than rather get up and that's pretty much my baseball career is ruined by the fact that i love the ocean i love being at the beach and restaurants and bars so that's my sad story but what i'm saying is you know, baseball's moving forward. Uh, we've got a lot of good things. The CBA is going to change the landscape. So we're going to have a different sport. And we're going to dive into that because there's so much to talk about. But what I want to talk about, speaking of Hall of Fame, uh, let's talk about David Ortiz. 
Um, recently, he got into an itch, a situation with the, he called Dan Shaw Nessie an a hall, and this is according to CBS Boston. Uh, I guess Dan didn't vote for David Ortiz, so David Ortiz is was kind of a jerk about it. But then again, I don't know if this is news to make David look bad, uh, so he's not voted for. But most, you know, all the votes are already in, so this news just came out a couple days ago. But I guess David was upset that hey. Uh, I wasn't picked. I don't know. Um, so it's interesting. I'm thinking, again, this is going to be a change in the history of the sport. Are we going to get anybody PD related or is the sport going to stick to their guns like they have been and, hell, and hold grudges? And this is why we have baseball writers issues. And this is why I didn't really shed a tear over Ken Rosenthal. I'm sorry. The guy is a great guy. But you know what? If we're going to sit there in one hand and complain about the baseball writers ruining the Hall of Fame, and then they get rid of Ken Rosenthal, you can't sit there and complain. Now, of course, all the social media places are ambling, chasing, wanting him to be on their shows now. And, you know, they, they see his opportunity to get him to be on their show so they can increase their viewership. Hey, I get it. Uh, me personally, I don't think I'd want him on my show. I want players that have played the game on the show. I want people that love the sport through and through. And I don't care if you're a wiffle ball player or a t-ball or your softball if you love the game anything with a stick and bat that's what we're show, our show is all about and if you've been listening to our podcast it's been doing really well and we want to thank all of our podcast download listeners uh, we appreciate everything uh, you guys have been really doing awesome for us we've go climbing up to almost 1400 downloads it's pretty good i only started the podcast six months ago i'm not a superstar like social media guy so it's all being built from the ground up um on other news, I just want to touch on because we got a lot of stuff today to cover over. Trevor Bauer, again, I want everyone to understand this because Trevor Bauer always has to be brought up. And during the CBA right now, he might not be directly brought up in conversations, but he's being brought up. And there's a section in the CBA that's the fines and suspensions. I'm sure that's going to be some type of talking going on because the way baseball implemented the whole we're going to remove balls out of the field this year during play really kind of rubbed people the wrong way. So, but... To get back to Trevor Bauer, the reason the grand scheme of things is Major League Baseball is sure taking a long time to make their decision on the balls that he, they took off the field. You notice how no one, there's hardly, it's weird. Some people got in trouble for sticky substance, and then Trevor Bauer's ball gets taken off the field and nothing is said. So many pitchers' balls were taken. That comes across really bad. Their balls were taken and off the field, and uh, nothing's been said. But here's the thing with Trevor Bauer. you got to remember uh, Major League Baseball is waiting. This case right now is L.A. County uh, Attorney's Office. It's sitting in the in the office. No decision has been made. So Major League Baseball has their investigation open, and they're waiting for Los Angeles County District Attorney's Office to make a decision, which is really weird. I've seen this with a job before where the job wouldn't make a decision unless something else happens. And what I'm saying is I've seen somebody at a job of mine uh, he was really mad at the company, got injured on the job, and the company wanted to wait. F and he also filed a, a discrimination case against his company. It was a weird thing to watch my friend go through. He went through it for two years. But the weird thing is the company did this. They did his investigation for his discrimination and then his injury separate because there are two different investigations. But what's weird is the injury... Uh, or the uh, discrimination investigator wanted to know about the injury during the case. So they were making their decision based upon if his injury was going to be covered or not on the job injury. So I'm like, that's kind of weird. They're two totally different separate entities. What does one have to do with the other? And why the hell does the, def the discrimination person investigating give a shit about your injury? Because they're going to piggyback that. So if the company goes, no, we're not going to move forward with the injury, the discrimination case is going to be like, oh, yeah, then we're not moving forward with it either. If they go, yep, he's got a legitimate injury, we're going to have to you know, take care of this, then the discrimination holds a little bit of water. At least that's what I saw, and that's what I saw my friend go through. This is what's going on with Trevor Bauer. They are holding on to this evidence. They're waiting for the CBA. The L.A. District uh, County District Attorney is waiting for the CBA, waiting for the season before it starts. In the next month or two, we're going to hear information on Trevor Bauer. But nothing's being said. It's all being held. Again, one's following the other, which to me, hey, man, a law is a law. That is separate than Major League Baseball. If you broke the law and there's an investigation going and he's done a crime, then go after him. Make it statement. Don't play this game 
where you're it's just like what major league baseball is getting in trouble with with the players time manipulation you manipulate things no that isn't how it works if if something is wrong make a decision get it over with don't sit there and wait for a, another party like major league baseball to make their decision so you can make your decision that's bullcrap that is not what our laws are bound that's not fair and equal treatment but we're not going to go down that i'm just frustrated with how major league baseball has been handling trevor bauer even if you love trevor bauer or hate trevor bauer imagine if it's just ken griffey or it's any player let's say it's albert pools you're we're frustrated with the time in between why is it taking so long to make a decision and this is a theme that fans are getting upset with with major league baseball it's you know you you get to the point where you get frustrated with the process. What are you going to do? Moving on to other news. Fox KTVU Oakland has reported this week, and we've been reporting about this a lot. Man, if you're an Oakland A's fan, my hat's to you. You've got patience. Damn, you got patience. I would not want to be an Oakland A's fan. And honestly, I've met a million Oakland A's fans. They're cool shit. I love Oakland A's fans. Uh, I think they're great fans, great history. But with the Oakland Raiders leaving town and the A's debacle, you got Dave Stewart with a committee to revitalize the stadium. You got the waterfront thing that's been going on for five or six years. You got the Oakland owners going to Las Vegas constantly looking at new ballparks and doing surveys. You got the Pacific Northwest that has a, you know, vying for a team. So what is really going to happen? But what has recently happened, reported by Fox KTVU in Oakland, the residents are not happy with a spending tax for a, a new A's ballpark survey. So again, this is the problem with the Oakland. It's such a mess over there. Think about it. You've been doing this waterfront proposal since what, 16, 17, even further back. And you're now just figuring out the spending tax, how to fund that. It's, it doesn't make sense what's going on in Oakland. And again, if I'm a, I'm not, an owner obviously i'm not a city council member i don't understand how this stuff works but i'm just a fan just sitting there going this doesn't make sense there's too much taffy being pulled left and right are you staying are you going are you revitalizing somebody make a freaking decision and this is what's sad about the oakland a situation nobody's making a decision and it's the fans that are suffering and it's not fair to the fans and you're pushing fans away and again major league baseball always say this they go 10 steps forward one step back this is a perfect example of one step back Major League Baseball needs to step in and figure out what's going on in Oakland, man. Don't play the game with the fans where you're just marketing different ideas. Waterfront idea, revitalization. We're going to Vegas, maybe Portland. I don't know. It's just kind of ridiculous. That's all I'm saying. Carlos Correa, another news, signed with Scott Burroughs, the mega agent. So we all know what this means now. This is basically... <laughs> It is what it is, guys. Korea's going for the big bucks. You got Boros on your side. Going for the big bucks. So there's been a lot of talks of where he's going, who, where he's going to fit in. Now, here's something I want to talk about is this is something that's going on a lot right now. And it's I get it. It's, it's part of the media. But I, I can't tell you how many fake news lines I'm seeing about Oh, New York Yankees interested in Freddie Freeman and big talks going on for this and that. I mean, these articles and their sources are zero. There's no sources for this. So when they say Korea signing with the Dodgers, there's, you know, Dodger fans, this is what they want. I get it. But, dude, there's no proof of this, um, of these meetings. There's no proof that this is where they're going to sign. So I'm what I'm saying is, is take it with a grain of salt, fans. Because I'm, I'm reading stuff all day long. If you guys follow me, you know I'm in, just insane about checking every news article I, I can find. Try to find the source. Try to find information. And I constantly go down these rabbit holes where the tagline is, is like, for example, the other day it was Freddie Freeman. You know, best fit is the Yankees. Talks happening. And then you read the article and it has nothing to do with any talks. It just says Freddie Freeman did this in Atlanta. He'd be a good fit in New York. And it's those type of... I guess clickbait that I fall for often because I'm like, ooh, what's going on Freddie Freeman? Ah, damn it. I went down another rabbit hole and went nowhere. So, I mean, that's the frustration is what we go through in the offseason right now with the free agency. You know, where's Freddie going to go? Where is Carlos Correa going to go? Uh, Clayton Kershaw. And what's going to happen is, and we've talked about this, as soon as the CBA agreement is done, 
the gates are opening up, man, and they're off and running. They're going to be gone, and there's going to be free agencies because we still got the salary salary arbitration going on. Man, we got a lot of stuff going on um, right now. I mean, not right now, but once the CBA signed, it's just going to be a flood. There's so much stuff that has to go on, but the Hall of Fame is going to start today. Um, but you know what? We I want to talk about um, Lightum real quick. Uh, the Lightum Championships are over. If you guys uh, missed it, I told you last podcast, by the time we talked this week, the Dominican series will be over. It was the uh, it, it was a very interesting series because, first off, when you look at the Dominican, they have a lot of major players to go and play. M- Milky, Milky Cabrera, Albert Pujols, we talked about this. Uh, of course, Marcelo Zuna. But what has happened is the Gigantes won in grand fashion, they had one of the best offenses, and part of the reason was Marcelo Zuna. Now, the way I look at it is, you know, at those parties when you got your friends over and you got that one friend or uncle who's had a little bit to drink, and the kids are out front playing wiffle ball and they're having fun with their little yellow wiffle little ball bat, and the uncle wants to go out there and show them who's boss. So he goes out there and gets that big red bat. Remember that big freaking red bat? And goes out there and just starts nuking, just hitting nukes off these little kids. That's what Marcelo Zuna looked like during this Lightham Championship. Um, he's a former Major League player, one of the top players. You know, he's in the tops for voting for MVP. Um, he's had some controversy in the offseason. We talked about that, how him and his wife were in a domestic uh, violence dispute. Uh, when the police showed up, he had it pinned against the wall with his cast and choking her out, or at least, you know, cast under her throat. Uh, his side says that she had an extra cell phone and she was cheating on him. And then her side is he's abusing her. Uh, nothing's happened since then, so he's has a bad image right now. Major League Baseball's already announced their suspension on him, but he's, you know, what I'm saying is, is you can play for Lightham. You can still go play for the Dominican. So he was playing on their team, and again, it was like, shit. Here he is up to bat, crack, home run, you know, crack, home run. And Lightham is like to me. I think they're a Triple A. Some people have compared them to Double A, but when I've seen him play, I'm like, nah, these guys are way better in Double A. But that's what kind of pitching Marcelo Zuna is facing. Now, on the other side of the fence, there's the Estrellas. That was the team, the coaches, Tatis's father. Tatis's was in the dugout throughout the series. There was talk in December of Tatis playing in Lightham, but he never did. But I'm like, shit, man. Imagine if Tatis was playing versus the Gigantes. Marcelo Zuna. But, again, the Gigantes had the number one offense. And they were just exploding on teams. They had a great team. So congratulations to the Gigantes. Uh, Marcelo Zuna uh, is the Dominican Series MVP and well-deserved. He hit the bejesus out of the ball every game. If you guys were following me on IG, you just saw it over and over. Here's another home run. Boop. Another home run. Boop. You know, he was just like, it was playing with children for him. But that's Lightham. Some of you might look at it like it's unfair. But, hey, man, other teams had Major League players. So it's not like... It's, you know what I'm saying? It's just the luck of the draw. If you get the right player on your team, and the Gigantes got Marcel, and man, he hit the crap out of the ball. But let's talk. Um, let's go on to. Uh, we talked about um, trade rumors. Now, what I like about baseball, and again, I want to talk about this from a personal level, is I love baseball. Um, I'm 50 plus, uh, I've played the game. Um, I love seeing the younger generations into baseball, but you guys have such a better advantage. And I, I've, this kind of ties in the CBA. Uh, the talent and the people coming up the pipeline is way better than everything I've seen in my lifetime. I think the talent all around the world is phenomenal. Major League Baseball has spread their web out to international. So you got the KBO, you got Australian, you got you know, obviously Lightham, you got Japan Baseball. Uh, the World Baseball Classic when that comes back, and you're talking college ball and MLB and you know softball, NCAA, and there's so much. I just feel like the sport is back better than ever. 2020 was a great season for us. So if, what I'm trying to say is when I was younger, um, you know, working out and getting really good at baseball, you watched other people, you watched somebody on TV, or you read baseball cards. I think now that we live in the information age, um, you have access to YouTube. Kids now can look at millions of different techniques, how to hit, how to field, how to pitch. 
and we can record each other before tony gwynn was one of the most famous players in major league history he videotaped everything and he'd watch himself every game every game almost he would from my understanding every game he would watch his film after the game over and over he would what's crazy about tony gwynn is he can like tell you a pitch he got from a pitcher five years or 20 years ago the situation i mean he was so insane into the mental side of the sport in batting but i didn't have that one as a kid like you do now so my point is is i think because of all the technology and everyone sharing tips and everyone sharing everything because you can go to youtube and you can learn to make your own car you can go to youtube and make your own rocket ship uh frick you can do anything you want because it's all information age we're in the information age so i think because of that there's just so much great talent and the sport is becoming better and it's i have to honestly give credit to the major league players association the union they're constantly saying that we just want to bring an exciting game to the field for the fans and that is illustrated by the cba and what's going on in the cba uh they are talking about we just want to bring an exciting game to the field and one way we can do that is let these draft picks play early and no type of player manipulation of their players time and i think the players that being said tells you how they feel about the sport you can sit there and say all you want that oh they're just a bunch of rich brats we've already talked about that it's not the case players want to bring a great game onto the field they want and i agree i don't like how um chris bryant for the cubs i didn't like it then i don't like it now i don't like how they manipulated his service time so he that's a bunch of bull crap man if we got talent let's bring them up on opening day there's no reason to keep people down because of you not paying them you know what hey, if they don't perform then put them down then they're not going to get paid so I get what you're saying as an owner, but at the same time, we want to see this young talent play now. We don't want to wait for you to manipulate our talent. We want to be able to have teams where they're competitive, all teams competitive. And we went over this last week. I talked about on June and July how many teams were in the playoff race. Um, and then the dog days of summer, August, September, is where you start seeing the separation. And that's what happened. But there isn't a great race going on for the majority of the season in all divisions. Even the American League Central had a race for a little while. So, to me, the sport's getting better. So, I hope Major League Baseball realizes this. And I think it has a lot to do with we, the game is changing, man. The game is changing. But let's go into some other news. Uh, Tampa Bay Rays were in the news this week uh, about their... God, how can I talk about this? This is a subject you got to listen to. And please comment below in the comments, guys. And... And check out our links. I got to do that every now and then because I want more activity. Please comment how you feel. If you agree with me or not. But I'd rather. My goal is to bring news to you guys. Baseball News Club. That's the name of my. <laughs> the company that's sponsoring Ball and Play. Uh, we just bring news to you. I find millions of different sources and I bring it to you. Sometimes I give you my opinion. But the main thing is we're trying to bring you information. Now the Tampa Bay Rays is a story you have to listen to. Um, recently uh, their ownership. Uh, principal owner Stu Sternberg, you know, he's in the news again because he wants to split between Montreal and Tampa Bay. Now, here's the thing with Tampa Bay. This has been their, their two, the split season, two stadium themes is nothing new. Tampa's been trying to do that for a while. Um, but here's, here's a problem with Tampa. They don't bring in fans. As successful as they've been, it is not a place that brings in fans. And it blows my mind. How the hell did you get a new stadium? How the hell are you guys doing anything down there? But I think the owner, the principal owner, Stu Steinberg, has been seeing the writing on the wall for a long time. He's not a stupid dude. And you can, listen, first off, there was no Devil Raid fans until the last couple years. I've always joked, and you know what I'm talking about. We all got friends that's either a Marlin fan or a Ray fan, and they were nowhere four or five years ago. All of a sudden, they're there. And I think sometimes fans become those fans because like, you know what? I just want to pick a shitty team. I'm not going to be one of those bandwagon Yankee fans. I'm just going to pick a bad team and I'm going to go through it. And we're going to win a championship someday and I'm going to be there because I was there through the thick and thin. Hey, good for you. It's not going to happen. Um, but I haven't, there's no real Tampa Bay fans. And to proof of that, um, if you got to remember 2008, they rebranded Devil Rays to the Rays. 
uh, that's when things started to turn around. You saw the Matt Professor, uh, Madden get in there. They really had some, and one thing you got to comment on them is they've got one of the best offices, front offices in Major League Baseball. The amount of talent that's been spit out of Tampa, especially since 2008 moving forward, is ridiculous. And you look at the talent now with Randy Rosarino, you can go back to James Shields and Crawford and Longoria. I mean, the talent they've had and the winning starting from like 2010, they've been a fantastic winning club. Crazy talent. Crazy organizations. Again, one of the best front offices in Major League Baseball. But you figure winning brings attendance. A uh, good example, San Diego. You go when San Diego suck, nothing much going on. Now with the changes, stadium's packed. And I'm born and raised San Diego. Family's been there 90 years. Uh, parents been in the same home 50-plus years. We, we're diehard baseball fans, every single one of us. Uh, my dad used to watch baseball games at Lane Field in downtown San Diego back in the day. So what I'm saying is one thing with San Diego, when you start bringing in good baseball, we fill the stands, man. We are a great baseball city, but you got to bring in the teams. Got to bring in winning teams. It's only been a couple years San Diego's been doing that, and they're packing it. Dude, Tampa, let me, let me read you something. This is, this is how bad it is, and this is why he wants to split seasons between Montreal and Canada. But here's the funny thing. Is Montreal really that much of an improvement? I mean, if you older ball fans or baseball fans remember Montreal Expos, what did you always see? The stands were freaking empty. There was nobody would go to those games. No matter how successful Montreal was, you never saw a packed stadium. You never saw even in fans in center field. It was no such thing. So I'm sitting there going, there must be something about this sport. I must not be bright enough. I had 116 IQ back in college, but that was a long time ago. Uh, I don't know, 25 years ago. I probably lost a few points since then. Then again, sometimes I think I gained a few points. But no, I did do have my IQ measured in college. Uh, and I, I like to think I'm pretty intelligent, but I cannot figure out why as an owner would you want to be in Tampa or Montreal. You're not going to draw on fans. I don't get it. it. There's just something about baseball. I don't, I, I'm just not bright enough. And maybe I need to reach out to, I got a couple of friends that are used to being baseball management, major league baseball, uh, a couple of acquaintances that actually I'm in contact with the former GM. I just need to pick their brains more. Cause I just don't understand it. I don't know how you can survive as a baseball organization with no fans. And uh, major league baseball recently is rejected the idea from the, uh, from Stu Stuberg again. So fans upset, you know, I remember seeing this video on Tampa Bay fans, what all 100. I mean, come on guys, you, you have to show up. This is a failure on your part as a baseball fan. You've got a fantastic club and you're not going there. And I'll give you an example. 2009, they're averaging 23,000 fans. So you're thinking, Ooh, that's got to go up. They've been awesome since 2000, what, 2008, 2009, 2010. You know, with Madden, they were a phenomenal team. Well, 2014, they had lowered to 18,000 as their home attendance average. Dude, that's 2014. They were a popular club. Uh, 2018, 14,000 was their home advantage or ad attendance. 14,000 to 2000. Come on, guys. That was 2018. They've been a fabulous club since then. You want to know what their home attendance was for last year's 2021? We're talking about a team that went through the World Series the year before. One of the most talented teams in Major League Baseball. They won the AL East. They had to rake it in, man. They had to rake it in. There had to be, what are you thinking, 40, 30,000? Not even freaking close. Cold as hell. 25? Nope. 20? Nope. 15? Nope. 12, 11, 10? Nope. 9,514. Yeah. It kind of makes you think like this is something what your drunk uncle would tell you. You know, at a party, going, oh, they only average 90. And you're like, yeah, whatever, dude. It's a Tampa Bay Rays, uncle. You're you're drinking your paps and you're just drunk as shit. You, I don't believe you because you're stupid. You're my uncle. No, that's why you're single. And, you know, I'm not going to, I'm just joking. Hey, I used to be that uncle. Um, but anyhow, um, it's just, it's, it blows my mind. It really blows my mind 
and now you want to move to Montreal and you want to split, so you want to go from one shitty fan base to another shitty fan base. I what's interesting to me, and again, this is what I'm talking about. I'm an intelligent person. You're intelligent. Why the hell are you? You know, everyone, everyone's, all signs are pointing Las Vegas, but you want to go to Montreal? You want to go to Canada? Eh? Take off? Eh? You, you come on, man. This isn't Super Troopers. You know, this is reality. I don't understand. Obviously, if they go to Las Vegas, they call themselves the. I guess the Las Vegas Rays wouldn't really work because I don't think there's any Rays in desert. So they're going to have to change it to something weird. Um, desert related. we we'll call them the Las Vegas Cacti. But, it, you know, my point is, is all signs are pointing to Vegas, but yet the owner of Tampa Bay wants to go to Montreal. Again, it's beyond me. I don't understand. Maybe one day I'll be smart enough to understand it. I don't get it. But let's move on to other news. Uh, New York Yankees, a former pitcher. Uh, I'm just going to touch on this one because it's really it's really screwed up. Uh, but he not only played for the Yankees, he played for other organizations. Um, he gets 40 to 60 years for murder of his daughter, Sergio Mitri. Or Mitri. Um, I don't, I'm not going to go down the rabbit hole with this one and talk a lot about it. It's just a, it's a baseball tragedy. Um any person out there that thinks violence is a way that solves things, it doesn't. And it's just going to be miserable for the rest of your life being violent. I myself grew up with a lot of violence. Uh, as I grew older, I got away from it. Um, but if you have a friend or family that needs help, there is national hotlines for domestic violence. I encourage you to save it on your phone. Please Google the phone number. Um, I'll, I'll put it. I'll put it here on the screen but you know there's always ways to get help but unfortunately this young man that's just that's just tragedy that's just tragedy so let's just move on to other news um one thing i want to talk about in the team i've been really bagging on and you guys follow me as los angeles angels i mean they're just you know it's where players go to die it's where you get your big contract you go to die and it i feel like players go there it's kind of like Tampa Bay. It's a mystery. Why would you want to go for Tampa Bay? They got no fans. Why would you go play for LA? Because you're going to make a shitload of money, man. You're going to get paid. And you don't have to do anything because you're going to bring your family to Disneyland every single day before the game, after the game. It's what it is. But here's the thing that I've been bagging on LA because Noah Syndergaard is not your solution. But they drafted 20 pitchers with 20 picks in the 21 Major League Draft. Uh... Seven international players. And I think they did a pretty good job of picking up talent. And what I mean is uh, Raciel Iglesias. I think that's a great pickup for him. Uh, Noah could be a nice little fit. He only got one year, 20, 21 million. Um, Alex Cobb, Aaron Loop, Michael Lawrenson. Um, so they've, they've made moves. I mean, Raciel Iglesias, dude, four years, 58. That dude... It has an arm so they've addressed the back end they're trying to address the middle and the starting with noah this is good moves if you're an angel fan who i've been giving a hard time to the angels organization their and their owners for a while because the whole if you listen last week to our podcast it's just frustrating as hell trying to understand what's going on with mike trout um because of the lies by the organization went from a level two sprain to calf sprain to missing just to the all-star game and then playing at the end of the season. Now they're saying they got a target date of spring training. That has me worried. What do you mean a target date of spring training? What is going on with Mike Trout? Dude, we want the best player in baseball on the field, but we don't want to be lied to. So LA is a very interesting case study right now. I think for the off season, if you're a fan, uh, what are they going to be like next year? I don't know. I don't know. I think they're making themselves more competitive, but at the same time, you're the Angels, man. You've got, <laughs> you've got a lot of issues. Got a lot of issues. So, uh, those are that's the information on that. Now, um, again, Hall of Fame. Uh, we the Hall of Fame is announced today. Again, I'm picking. Like I said, the non PD related players are going to be the Kent, the Helton, um, those type of players. The Scott Rowland. 
and then PED related. I, I, you know, if David Ortiz gets in, it's just going to be weird. But I, I don't know what's going on. And you know what? I want to see, honestly, if David doesn't get in, I want to see his, I'm going to go right to his social media account and watch how pissed off he is. Oh, that's going to be funny. He's going to be mad. He's going to be mad. He ain't going to be happy at all. So let's move on to other news. Okay, what I want to touch on now is NCAA girls top uh, 25. It sucks. <laughs> like a week or two ago, I gave you guys, I didn't have the top ratings. And then like, I'm not even kidding you. The very next 24 hours, I'm like, here comes all these polls with the freaking top 25 softball teams. I'm like, come on, man. I just wanted to report it. And now I have to wait a week. So here we go. Um, this is uh, NCAA.com. This is Division One Girls Rankings. Uh, this is through games. Uh, this is January 23rd. So this is pretty fresh. This is only two days old. Number one ranked South Carolina. They were 17 and one last year. Number two, Girls Softball Division One, Stanford. Number three, NC State. Number four, Tennessee. Number five, Louisville. Number six, Indiana. Number seven, Michigan. Number eight, Arizona. Number nine, Texas. Number 10, Yukon. Number 11, Baylor. Uh, number 12, LSU. Number 13, Iowa State. Number 14, Georgia Tech. Number 15, Georgia. Uh, as much as I want to keep going through it, I want to challenge you. Go to NCAA.com and look at the girls. Um, softball Division One. Listen, guys, we're ending January. Springtime is right around the corner. We've got spring training on the 26th that's happening. Uh We've got minor league baseball that's going to be happening. We've got the KBO happening. Uh, Japan ball is going to start later on this year. We've got It's All Rolling. We've got the Hall of Fame. We've got the Field of Dreams. 2022 is going to be badass for us, guys. It's going to be a lot. It's going to be fun. Um, so, again, softball, uh, base, uh, college, NCAA, they, their schedules are out. I've been telling you guys this for like the last month and a half. But, uh, and spring training schedules are out. So you can get your spring training tickets. You get your college tickets. Uh, I know for me and my girl, we're going to be seeing the Hillsborough Hops again this year. Uh, we've watched them a few times. They're a great little minor league team here in the Pacific Northwest. Uh, we also got we have to watch the other uh, team here too. But I'm just encouraging guys to get out there this year, get back in the baseball, support little league, support softball, support college, support everything, guys. Support international. Now. Um, I talk about the Phillies often because of Dame Dumb Dave Dombrowski's comment. So we're going to switch gears here. Uh, how he talked about he wants to focus on pitching in outfield. And he's kind of been a little confusing in the offseason because he hasn't really addressed that. And he went and got an, signed an international shortstop when they have this other shortstop that's up and coming. Well, Matt Klintak, the GM, has officially left for the Brewers. So... Just like the A's fans, I feel like the Philly fans, there's some frustration building here. The GM is leading. I don't know because I'm not a Philly fan, and all I got to ask you Philly fans, please comment. Let me know. Is this a good thing or a bad thing? I don't know the story of Matt, uh, if he was a good GM or not. Uh, is he leaving because he's frustrated with the direction and how Dave Nebrowski's not fulfilling his promises? Or is this – I don't know if this is a good or bad move. So, again – Philly fans in the comments, let me know if this is good riddance or if this is a bad sign for Philadelphia. But he's going to the Brewers, going to a different division. Is this a plus for the Brewers? Because the Brewers looked good last year, one of the best pitchings in the National League, or baseball for that matter. I don't know. Uh, so please, I that is a story I'm going to keep on my, my uh, ball and play uh, news information I'm going to bring you guys because that's something I want to follow up on. And then something a little quirky I want to give you guys. Let me. I got to bring my cell phone up for this one because I didn't put it down in my notes. Um, this was reported, and this is something really cool. Um, the last three times the World Series was won by the Atlanta Braves, the last name of the starting quarterback at Auburn was Nix, N-I-X. So in 1997, when the Braves won the World Series, or 1957, excuse me, Lloyd Mix was the starting quarterback. At Auburn. So that's okay. So what? Well, in 1995, when the Braves won, Pat Nix was the quarterback for Auburn. I think at that point you're going, wow, that's, that's a quink-a-dink. That's, that's 
one of those little baseball nerd trivia things that's like so random it's just out there and never never ever used. Well, 2021, Bo Nix. Braves won last year. Bo Nix is the quarterback. That's how it has to work every time the Braves win. All I got to say is the Braves win in a couple years. I hope the Knicks family have somebody up the pipeline to fill in that spot because, you know, pressure's on the Knicks family, man. You got to come up with a quarterback at the same time as the Brave win the next World Series. That's just so... Do you know there's some dude somewhere that put a hundred bucks down uh, the second time it happened going, I bet you the son, he's going to do it. And, and he's probably rich right now. Um, funniest news story of the week. Uh, A-Rod freezing at Lambeau Field. I know you guys, hey man, we're baseball news. I'm just bringing the news. Love or hate the guy. He's an idiot. Um, he's at <laughs> Lambeau Field freezing to death watching a football game. So to me, a couple things popped in my head when I saw that. If you know anything about football and you especially know anything about Lambeau, there to get a ticket is like the waiting list is like what 20, 25, 30 years to get freaking tickets. So A, he has to know somebody, and he was there with his female. I'm thinking she's and again, I haven't looked into it. I'm thinking she's the Lambeau fan. She's the Green Bay fan, and he just wanted to put himself there. But you can tell the dude was freezing. He was obvious. There's difference of colds. You know, there's cold in Michigan, that's cold. Chicago, Illinois, New York. That's freaking cold. I'm on the. I'm in Oregon. I experienced. We get down the 50s and the 20s in winter time, but I mean that's a different type of cold, man. When you're that's that's. I myself used to live in the mountains, uh, ski resorts. I used to get snow all the time. I'm I'm. I know how to live in the forest with snow and in a cabin. I did it for years. Not a problem. But honestly, as much knowledge as I have as the outdoors, which I'm a big outdoor person, I don't think I could deal with snow in Detroit. Or New York, I wouldn't even know how to start. I wouldn't even know how to deal with it because it's a whole different level of cold and snow. So here he is at Lambeau. And, you know, it's not the same cold you get like when you get a sunburn in Hawaii and then that night the breeze is blowing and you're like, ooh, I feel cold because you're sunburned. No, no, this is a different type of freezing. This doesn't, you know, your your butt cheeks and your extremities, man, you just want a jacuzzi bad. Or you go take a, it's, you know, you know, your cold is when you take a hot shower. Like, let's say you're outside doing yard work, which I do a lot. And I go take a hot shower. You know, it's freaking cold outside is when you have the hot shower, super hot. And you, you get out of the shower and you got the, the red circle on your chest because the water was so hot. But you still were like, I'm still kind of cold. I'm not because you're thawing out, man. You're not, you're frozen. So I thought that was hilarious. But let's move on to. The CBA. All right, man. We're doing good on time. So let's go ahead into, we're going to talk about the CBA. So what's great news is we talked about uh, Thursday, just a little while ago, the owners and the players via Zoom, they met. Well, Monday, they met again. So this is exciting. Um, Again, this is progress, guys. And I negotiate. I do sales all the time. I negotiate contracts all the time. That's my job. And I can tell you, baseball fans, from the perspective of behind the scenes, this is a positive sign. If you're negotiating contracts and the other side isn't negotiating with you, that's a stalemate. There's something going on. You're not getting anywhere. This is good. Yesterday they met, and they're meeting again today. This is Tuesday, the the 25th. That is such positive news. And, you know, I have to address this. There was a lot of chicken littles out there in the news media and social media a lot of you were losing your shit when this was announced in early December about the lockout. Remember, there's never been a lockout or a game miss in regular season due to lockout. Due to strikes, yes, but not lockout. You guys were losing your shit. And I cannot tell you how many, and I, I'm disappointed. I really am. I'm not going to call anybody out, but you know who you are. There's a lot of people out there. I think the funniest person said there's going to be three days missed. <laughs> three games missed. That was funny. I've heard one month. I've heard six months. I've heard... I've read, and these are pretty reputable uh, news outlets. I read one in particular. I'm not going to say their name. I almost did. They said it was going to. We're going to miss the whole season. So there was just this fake news, and people wanting to have their own opinion, making a guessing game. Because if it did happen, then they can go see. I told you it was going to be a month or two, or I told you it was going to be a year. I know what I'm talking about. It was the same thing when the World Series is won. I couldn't believe how many people were out there like, look at I predicted this back in June. I, 
That's called a guess. It's not a prediction. When you predict the winner of the World Series in January, it's a freaking guess, guys, because you don't know who's going to be signed. You don't know what your team's going to be. And it's a totally different team going into the playoffs than it is now. So, again, you know who you are. There are some people out there giving false narratives and predicting we're not going to have baseball and we're going to miss games. This is a positive sign. They met yesterday. And they met today. Now, this is one thing I want to bring up. Um, obviously, changes to the revenue sharing is always going to be the pivotal part, the center of the universe for the CBA. Um, but it's just a matter of who's driving the car. The owners want to drive it. Players want to drive it. Both sides obviously are making concessions. Now, here's the important thing I want people to, to understand. Both sides are making concessions to make an agreement. The word concession means you've agreed already on everything else but a couple little your little loose ends. That's what a concession is. If not, they'd be using the words like negotiations. They're still in negotiations. They're still no negotiations are over. And in fact, um, they're making concessions. And Major League Baseball's Players Association is the one that has been making concessions lately. Uh, they made a concession for the the plan for the age based free agency earlier. So they conceded to that because they wanted the free agency earlier. They wanted the salary arbitration earlier. So instead of six years to free agency, they wanted five. And there's some other logistics to it, but I'm not going to go down the rabbit hole with that. Look it up yourself. Don't be lazy ass. And then salary arbitration players wanted two, you know, three to two. Owners were always stubborn in that area that they are not going to concede to that. So the players have conceded that. So that is interesting. Again, that's part of revenue sharing between the the whole scheme of thing, but it's also a revenue sharing between the teams. That was also conceded by the players. But the one thing I didn't see that's super positive, there's no talk of the playoff 14 uh, team expansion. There's no talk of the DH. So that means that's a done, it's done. It's either been fully agreed and they moved on and it just hasn't been announced. So that's the exciting thing I want you guys to listen to my words they're not talking about that so that means it's done they've already agreed either to not have the dh or to have it they've already agreed to expand the playoffs or to not expand it so that talk is no longer in the lingo it's revenue sharing this is what you expect when you have a bunch of money and you're negotiating it you come down to the nuances now the owners obviously they have different ways to look at it but the union is pushing for a higher minimum salary they want a higher like 700 plus thousand uh, and they want the 18 draft lottery and of course the luxury tax threshold uh, the teams want to go higher the owners want to go lower not a lot of teams exceeded last year but the problem with the tax luxury tax is you get punished and if you return the next year and you exceed it again you get punished again and, it, and if you do it like three or four years you're talking up almost a 50 percent it gets really redonkulous so that's a bugaboo with the union. They want a higher ceiling. Now, I was thinking about this. I, I don't know. I was thinking about this, and I'm thinking, wouldn't it make sense to make it higher? But at the same time of making it higher, I want the minimum to be higher. So what I'm saying is I want those teams like the Pirates and the Orioles. I don't want you sitting there dragging, anchoring down Major League Baseball. You should be expected to spend a certain amount of money on your team each year to make it competitive and i think that's what the players are pushing for they're like hey if we keep pushing the ceiling that means the other teams have to be more competitive i don't know i don't know i'm just spitballing with you guys but um no i'm not saying the deal's intimate but the meeting today is positive and the fact they're going to meet within 24 hours dude that is great news and the meetings aren't about like, screw this, we're not getting anywhere. You know what, if this continues, we're just going to strike the seasons in jeopardy. We're not hearing any of that language. And I've been telling you guys this all along. I pay attention to the language and the body language. I'm good at reading people. I could pick a weirdo out of a crowd quickly. I could pick a liar out of a crowd quickly. This is honestly great news. Um, to me, it's like breakup sex. And that's what's so funny about this. Okay, you broke up yesterday and you had your breakup sex. Now you're back at my door again today. You want more? Hey, just joking. But come on, 
breakup sex is supposed to be one and done but hey you're back again all right what are we doing here this is a i guess that's a positive thing if you have breakup sex two days in a row but what i'm saying is what gives whatever happened yesterday it's working for them to come back today uh i was reading the news this morning nothing yet is posted but it's just super positive uh it's kind of weird how they wanted to do it today in the hall of fame it's almost like that friend that's like wants all the attention but it, i think it's a positive theme um and then the chicken littles of the world that i called out a few weeks ago on podcast a lot of you guys were freaking out over this like the world was coming to an end first off you're missing the winter meetings which you don't give a crap about don't act like you give a crap about the rule five draft now sal salary arbitration i do think a lot of fans pay attention to that but don't don't go lying to me guys you know for a fact you don't give a crap about baseball in december because a lot of you don't even know about the international ball and you don't even follow it so i'm talking to you get your ass off the chair and get some something done here folks but what i want to tell about the chicken littles of the world out there is how can you say it's going in the right directions and this is how grown-ups talk when they're negotiating contracts. So for you that are inexperienced and don't see the big picture, I'm trying to help you understand. I negotiate contracts every day. What happens behind the scenes, this is positive. When you're negotiating with a company and trying to get a contract, I run my own business on the side too, uh, a tea business. When you're able to talk to somebody and keep coming back to the table, there's interest. You're going in the right directions. And again, the chicken littles of the world. This is how grown-ups talk. This is how negotiations happen. It doesn't happen overnight. We Guess what's going to happen when the CBA comes up next time? The same crap. We're going to go through the same theme. So I'm not saying there's going to be a lockout, but this is how deals are made. This is positive language. This is going in the right direction. Um, what I want the fans to realize, it's nothing personal. This is strictly business. So I don't want... I know we take things personal because so do I. It frustrates me that we're in this little holding pattern right now. But we're going to have baseball, guys. Are we going to get spring training? We're going to get spring training. We're going to miss some games? Maybe. Things are going to be crazy. Here's the fun thing. Baseball is going to be fun this year because once, let's say they agree this agreement in the next week or two and the CBA is locked in and they're like, we agree to this contract. The flurry of action those next couple weeks is going to be insane with free agencies. I mean, dude, everybody's waiting for the CBA. And you saw a couple teams like the New York Mets go crazy before uh, the CBA was announced. Uh, they went and spent some money, max for one. But what else is the Mets going to do? Where's Freddie Freeman going? Where's Korea going? Where's Clayton Kershaw going? What are the Dodgers going to do? What are the Yankees going to do to get themselves? I don't think the Yankees have to do much because I really think the Yankees are going to mold together this year. But it's going to really rock and roll. And it's going to really rock and roll quickly. So um, now I just say, you know, the way I look at it is, the you know, to draw back to luxury tax, because I know that's a big part for the owners right now. That's really something they're pushing, the luxury tax. Um. You know, I think it makes it competitive. I think it's a good thing. I don't know if, again, I have to really look at the, the financials of this, but I feel like it's a good thing. But, you know, you don't go to Vegas and play the quarter machines. You go to Vegas to spend your money, to have fun. And afterwards, yeah, you might be a little depressed and regret it. When you return back home, you're like, man, I just blew five grand. Yeah, I got nothing for a show for it but memories, but I was drunk the whole time, so I don't really remember it. Um, but... To me, that's what it is. You don't go to Vegas to play dime machines and quarter machine games. You go to Vegas to freaking have fun and spend some money. So that's the way I look at it with Major League Baseball. It's time to spend some money. But, hey, uh, spring training is coming up on the 26th. We're less than 30 days away from that. I think we're going to have spring training. Catchers and pitchers are going to be reporting uh, mid-month in February around Valentine's Day. Things are looking up, guys. Things are looking up. So, I was going to go into some other stuff, but I see the time on here. I want to get this closed out. I got the rest of my day to do jet, man. So thank you very much for listening to Ball and Play. Please subscribe. Please comment. Please follow us on Instagram, Baseball News Club, uh, Ball and Play. And then definitely subscribe on YouTube. Follow us. Make comments. But we appreciate all your help. These podcasts are going to get better and better every week. Sesma signing out. Peace, y'all.